Hi all, it's Mike McHugh. I'm the Creative Systems Engineer from Adobe Pacific. In this episode, we're going to be having a look at some of the brand new features in InDesign CS5. That's Tank 5. The first thing we're going to have a look at is Mini Bridge. Mini Bridge is in there and it's great for placing a ton of images in and there's some new options around placing images and also fitting images. We're gonna have a look at some of the ways that we can fit our images to their frames and the brand new auto fit option, which is super handy for designers. Once we've got a bunch of images in there, we're then going to have a look at a new tool. Wouldn't be a new version of InDesign without a new tool, and this time it's the gap tool. We're gonna to use the gap tool to adjust all the gaps, make an asymmetrical looking design. We can even adjust the gaps between images and text. There's a whole bunch to look at, so I hope you enjoy this episode of Creative Suite TV. I've promised to cover uh, two new features in this video, the gap tool and the fitting options in InDesign CS5. I'm also gonna use one other new feature which is Mini Bridge. It's a mini version of regular bridge. It actually links over. Uh, you can see over here I've created some collections with Bridge CS5 and they're also available within Mini Bridge. So that way I can navigate to something that I've saved earlier and here's some images that I've saved into a collection and I can access them right from here. I can change the size, I can change the weather. I can even do a full screen preview just by hitting the space bar there, straight out of InDesign. That's pretty awesome. And then, you know, I can toggle through images and so forth. So that's beside the point. We want to grab all six of these images. These are the ones, and I'm going to drag and drop them onto the page. So instantly you see, well, now that's useful, Mike, because the mini bridge can just stay in front here. I can collapse it over. It goes down into this neat little panel over there. You see what I'm talking about? And then you can click on that whenever you like and it comes back at its original size. Whatever. Now when I want to place these images on, this is where it also is a little bit different. And I'll zoom in to show you. As I click and drag with this, you'll notice that no matter where I put my cursor, the frame is still exactly the same size as the image. It's detecting the image. So it's saying, okay, I'm going to put this, I'm going to fit it in proportion, I'm not holding any keys down by the way, at 14%. And then it will plonk it in and then load up the next image for me. So a little bit of a difference there. They would have just drawn a regular frame and then fitted the top left corner in. So a little bit different. Again, as I'm clicking and dragging this out, I can do one other thing. If I would like to do a grid placement, rather than having to hold the shift keys down or whatever, all I need to do now is just use the up and right and left and down arrow keys on my keyboard. Now I've got six images here, so I just want six. And then I can drag them out that way. Now I can still change the gutter. If I want to change the gutter, I can do that. Uh, what have I got to do here? Hold down the Alt or the Option key or something like that, and then hit that hit the arrows to change the, the gutter. So we can, we can certainly still do that. But for now, I just want to place these in exactly as they are in a grid. So I've just got my mouse down, don't need to do anything. Just hit the arrow keys. There we go. Um, if I hold the space bar key down, by the way, I can reposition this whole thing so I can snap it up to the, the guides there. I like to be nice and neat. And then let them go. And then all of those images will fit exactly uh, into that space. So that's really great. The next thing that I want to do is have them fill those frames and you can do that. So these little guys at the top here allow you to fit to the frame or fill the frame proportionally. I've got them all selected at once and I'm just going to go ahead and click this one which is fill frame, frame proportionally. Watch what happens to the images. Of course they fill their frames proportionately. So now we've got a really neat looking uh, setup. Once we have our layout looking kind of good, we might like to change things around. For example, I might like to make this one a bit bigger or that one a bit smaller or whatever. If I click and drag this, you see I can resize the frame and then I need to reposition the image inside it. So I can use the new content grabber or this little donut as we call it right in the middle there. You click on that, that grabs the content and then I can move the image around, uh, grab the handles and resize it. That's a bit of a bummer, right? 
uh, to have to do all of those things. So I'm just going to undo a few things there and show you the new auto fit option. Select a frame, click on auto fit. And now when I resize the frame, the picture resizes too. So it's always going to fit within that frame. That's pretty awesome. So we can then grab all of these, right? Oh, I just moved them a little bit. Grab all of these. We can say, not only fit in there, also center. Then we can select them and say, auto fit. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on auto fit on each one of these. We're doing that. Auto fit, auto fit, and auto fit. And now when I resize, have a look at this. Resizes to always fit within that frame. Whoa, we're off to a cracking start today. Once you have that bit set up, then it's time to get onto the gap tool. So get excited, folks, because this is the gap tool right here. And when you use it, this is what you do. You don't need to select anything. You just hover over something that has a gap in it. So if I hover over there, have a look at that. The gap tool is showing me the gap. And if I want to move the gap, I simply drag the gap tool so that when I'm moving things about, I can make an asymmetrical looking design by simply clicking in the gaps. So that's pretty awesome. We can drag things around. So I'm sure by now designers are going, wow, I want to have a turn. Well, there's an extra bit. If I would like to just move one of these gaps, I simply hold the shift key down and then I can go ahead and move just one of them like that. Okay, so that's kind of cool. We can move them about and make more of an asymmetrical design. And then going back and using the donut tool, we can reposition things inside there without changing tools at all. It is simply awesome. It's a great way of moving things about. Like I said before as well, you can create, let's just say some text. I'll fill that with placeholder text. And if you've got text which are below the images and we can do live captions now. So maybe that could be a live caption and we'll have a look at that at some later date. But it will detect the gap between an image and text. Uh, again, with the shift key down, I can drag that up so that we get a nice line up across that way. We can change these gaps to get that all nice and even. It is a really great tool for creating layouts.